And of the 20%, you know, 80, of the 20% that are actually growing, only 2% grow because of new conversions, which means the new churches are really just filled with people who are church hoppers. Whoa. Whoa. That's right. Whoa. That's why I'm excited what God's doing for us in Kansas City. Because with the growth is also new converts. That's it. Three years ago, we almost fit in this same exact category. You hear what I'm saying? But I'm here as a witness. I did not walk into a situation where I had a large membership. I didn't walk into a situation where uh, we had we were renting a facility at the time. And within one month of me becoming pastor, we moved to a facility that we have now, our campus, that we just purchased and have almost nearly four acres of land. Wow. Ready for the next development of a new sanctuary. Yes. I wish somebody say amen. 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 But even with the favor of God, and that's all I attribute it to. You still have to be a good leader. Things are not just going to drop out of heaven into your lap. I wish somebody would hear me. I, I have no tolerance for lazy pastors. I have no tolerance for those who want to be a pastor but want to eat chicken and go to the banquet or the buffet every Sunday on the golf course in the week and you can't find them in the church office doing ministry. Now see, so y'all invited me. Y'all invited me. Now, now, again, I drive, I drive a, 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 a Honda Civic. My wife has a, a Chevy Equinox. Now, I'm not against, I think some men, we got some great men in here, they're deserving of, of, of cars and homes. But I'm just getting started in ministry. And I cannot stand... Pastors with expensive cars, big homes, and you go to their church, yeah. and, and, and it's totally not congruent. Yeah. 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 yeah, can I afford another car? Absolutely. With the, the membership and, and what God is blessing us financially, I purposefully drive the cars that I drive because I don't want the image uh -huh. yes. that is stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to be an example that if you want to have positive effects, people don't mind giving when they see where the money's going. People don't mind sacrificing when they have the vision that they are inclusive in and not felt exclusive. Good teaching. Good teaching. Y'all still love me? Can I get on? I'm talking about I'm talking about changing leaders for changing times. Now I got a whole lot of material. I got a whole lot. Now see, Douglas made a mistake. He said, "Take your time." All right. So why are you here? Now this was the meeting I had back in January with all of my church leaders in one of our auxiliary buildings on our campus. We now have more leaders than when I first came as pastors. And, and, and it's, it's the excitement that is sparked when people see results. Like I'm teaching now, I teach every Wednesday. There's a PowerPoint presentation, materials distributed every Wednesday. I deal with subject matters like I'm dealing with a series right now. From the blueprint to reality. All right. All right. Not just talking about the church, but individual lives that you now have to take control of to see where is God sending you. Yeah. Right. We're here today. Why? Look. Developing a new generation of apostolic leaders, the old age question, are leaders born or are they made? And I don't want to get into a debate. I feel that leaders are born. Yeah, that's right. You're born a leader. Yeah. 
Why? Because you are born in purpose. And I've got New Testament and Old Testament examples where Jeremiah talks about before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And even Paul talks about uh, for even before I was born, God had chosen me. If you're a leader, God has chosen you. Now let me, let me, let me, let me step out of here while I'm at it. I served my pastor faithfully for 35 years. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. In that time, folk was trying to push me. Why don't you start your own ministry? Why don't you go have your own church? You cannot listen to people. You've got to stay where your anointing is. Where God has put you. Some people have been, have been anointed to be great assistants, but they don't have what it takes to be a leader. And I'm a witness that you don't need a position to take you where God wants you. Because while they were talking about me being a Bishop Wagner's, Wagner's monkey, well, they said, Are you just carrying his bag. The problem is, when he was going to the White House, guess who was? When he was flying to, to Europe, guess who was? Yeah, yeah. And when God has an office for you, you don't have to politic for the office. You don't have to kiss up on somebody. If there's an office for you, the office will chase you down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I was made a district elder. I was made a suffragan bishop. I was even elected as the assistant general secretary. I was made the general secretary. And guess what? Was not a pastor. Because when you're in the will of God, those things don't matter. You cannot listen to people. If there's anything I've learned in my life, people will change on you. When you have got your midnight uh, meetings at Denny's drinking coffee and you're trying to plan strategy on how you can move up and what position I can give you and you support me, listen, saints, folk will change on you. Yes. Yes. And sometimes the folks changing on you are your own family members. Yes. Yes. I oh, see y'all don't want to say amen. Yes. Yes. So, 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 so. Am I helping somebody already? Why are we here today? We're here today because even though you're born a leader. I am a believer that leaders must be developed. And that's the problem. We have people who are born leaders, but they've not been developed to their full potential. That's why I applaud Bishop Johnson for having this mandate that, that, that prayerfully I can deposit some things that will help in our development. Along with Chairman Douglas, who I know was influential in me coming in. And I've been as well with Bishop Stewart. I've been with Bishop Garrett. I've, I've been to uh, a number of the councils doing these same sessions. Normally I'm there for like three days. And I could just name the councils from Alaska to Pennsylvania, Carolina, Michigan, uh, New Jersey, Wisconsin.